This video is sponsored by Unity, which makes a lot of sense because today we're going to be talking about four ways that you can make money with your game development skills, specifically in a Unity context. I want to start with the obvious one that people always miss and forget about, but make sure that you stick around for the end because I'm going to wrap it up with a way that you can make money that's just passive where money will just come in every month without you having to keep working. That's an interesting one, and I think probably the most exciting, but I want to save it for last. Before we get started, though, if you're already making money with your game dev skills, drop a comment down below and let us know what you're doing and how you're doing it. I'm curious to know what everybody else is doing. I'm going to be sharing the four ways that I've made money with game dev, but I'm really curious to see if anybody's got something else that maybe I missed or just get an idea of kind of the aggregate and go check out the comments below and maybe we'll have some interesting discussions down there on ways to make money. Before we get started though, if you've been looking for ideas, inspiration, or just a specific asset, make sure that you check out the Unity Spring Sale. They've got a lot of things 50% off and I've already grabbed quite a few deals at 80 and 70% off. There's a lot of just awesome stuff in there and it's only available until the 29th so I definitely recommend you go check it out. There's a link in the description with a list of the ones that I bought and a 25% off coupon, so go check that out. I'm gonna try to hit these all in the order that I've done them in myself, just because I'm not sure what order makes the most sense, and I think that it probably will work for you if you do them in the same order as well. Maybe not, maybe go kind of wild and random, but let's just hit it with number one. The first thing I would recommend for anybody who wants to get into the game development industry and make some money off of it is to just get a job working for somebody else who's already building a game or application. This is how most people make money in the industry and especially how almost everybody gets started. You get in and find some job where you're going to be able to make cash and learn at the same time. You're going to be able to grow your skills, grow your network, meet lots of people that will help you with other future jobs and other possible opportunities, but you'll also get paid in the process. Now, if you're not sure on how to get a job, I've done quite a few videos about it, but let's just go over a couple quick options. My favorite places for finding Unity specific jobs are number one, the Unity forums. They've re-added and reopened that so that people can post job openings there. It's a great place to go look, start finding possible employers and apply. Another great one was Cyber Coders. They send, tended to have a lot of US based Unity 3D jobs. If you're looking for something else, I don't know if they'll cover that, but that is what I found a lot of there. They weren't all games. There's some game stuff and some non game stuff. Also, LinkedIn is another pretty good source. I got an email today with a whole bunch of opportunities. And the final one, the best place to get jobs is recommendations through friends. Reach out to your friends, reach out to your network, say, hey, I'm looking for a game dev job. Anybody happen to know of anything? More often than not, that's where you'll find the position. The next way to make money is on the completely opposite end of the spectrum, and I'm sure you've probably seen plenty of videos about this on YouTube as well, and that's to make your own game, release it, and sell it. Now, this is an option. It is something that people do. They make money off of their games, releasing them and selling them, but I would say it's definitely not as sure a thing as getting a job. So if you really need the money and it's very important to get it right away, the job's going to be more stable. But if you're got some big aspiration and you feel like you've got the skills to build a game, then building out a game and releasing it is a viable way to make some cash. I've done it myself multiple times. And one of the things that I found really, really helps and works great is if you find a market that's relatively new, something that's coming up where there's not a whole lot of saturation yet, like the early iPhone market was a, a great opportunity. Early VR was another easy, great opportunity. And there are lots of things like this that come up when new technologies pop up, new platforms pop up. Consider those as possible targets or you know, build out your big full game. If you are going to build out a big giant game, it's important to just keep in mind how much money you plan to make figure that all kind of out in advance, figure out what you need to sell and start marketing your game right from the beginning. Start talking about sharing your game and getting it out in front of an audience right away. I recommend that people do that with devlogs on YouTube or Twitch or something like that. So you're getting out there constantly in front of the audience and just letting them know that it's there and also building out a better game. Again, I haven't done this a whole lot. I've released a couple of games and I remember thinking, wow, this is amazing when the first day I made a couple thousand dollars on a launch and the next day I made another couple thousand. I was like, oh, this is 
this is great. But remember also that when you release these games, you're going to get a big spike at the beginning and then maybe a spike on certain events. But the revenue is probably not going to be steady. Game sales revenue tends to be very spiky. It's right away, get a big chunk, and then whenever there's a big marketing thing or a big update, you might see another small bump. But it's not, not the steady revenue that you'll get from something like a job. Or option number three, which is contracting. Now, contracting is different from having a job because while you might be working with or for a company, you're not actually an employee. You'll be paid out through some external payroll system or some external payment system, or you might set up your own company to handle those payments if you start doing it as a bigger full-time thing. Now, when you set up a contract, you'll set it up one of two ways, either a price per job, so it'd be a price to get a thing done, you could give them a quote, and then once that thing's done, you send it over and then get paid. Sometimes it's half before, half after, or it just depends on the company and your relationship with them, where that trust is. The other option is that you'll be paid hourly, and this kind of feels a little bit more like a job. You might have some scheduled meetings that you have to attend, but generally, at least in California, and I'm sure it varies everywhere, there are some real strict rules around what they can and cannot require you to do when you're a contractor versus an employee. You also, again, have to deal with your own taxes and your payment stuff, so make sure that if you're doing contract work, you deal with that, but let's talk about how to get contracts couple great options. Again, the Unity job forums I've found have been super great for that. Also, just general game dev Discord servers. There are constantly people in there that are looking for somebody to do small to middle size, medium sized contracts. You know, these are anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars for these jobs. And then those sometimes turn into much bigger opportunities. Now, I want to also mention that if you are working on a contract job, you can and probably should be using assets from the asset store. When people hire you to do contract jobs, again, it depends on the contract and the actual company, but a lot of the time they just have a task that they want done. And if you know of an asset that will help get that done faster, speed up that pipeline and that timeline to get it out, then they're usually totally fine with you using that asset and putting that in there. And I would generally recommend it. The one thing to note though, is that they do need to have their own copy of that asset. So you're gonna wanna either have it purchased through their own account and then have them have ownership of it because you're gonna be passing over that that source to them so they need to have it or maybe have two copies of it. I found that it's generally more than worthwhile the amount of time that I spend building something versus getting it on the asset store. It's almost always gonna be way cheaper for me to just build it for the client. I said that wrong. I mean, cheaper for me to buy it than to build it. So usually I'll make sure to add in some sort of a budget or buffer for assets that we might need. Usually I'll say, hey, we might need some art, some skinning, some themes, some packs, or maybe a little bit of extra stuff in here. Can we budget something for that in? And I would recommend that you do the same. Just have them kind of be aware of it and ready for it or absorb that into your cost and just kind of have that on your cost. Depends on if you're doing like a fixed price thing, I would recommend just absorbing that in and kind of figuring it out. If you're doing it hourly, then just tell them, you know, let's have a little bit of a budget for these things. That's my recommendations at least. Now let's go on to the exciting one or the one that I think is kind of most interesting and people don't really know or consider it that often. At least most people that I tell about it, they're like, what? I didn't realize I could do that or I didn't realize I could make that much money on it. And that is to just sell assets on the asset store or other platforms, but really I specifically prefer the Unity asset store because I've used it. And I wanna just briefly share my experience with it and then tell you a little bit about what you can do to make some money on it on your own. Because you don't necessarily have to have like a whole game studio, you don't have to be an artist, you don't have to have some amazing great idea to make some cash on the asset store and make good passive recurring revenue. You just have to solve a problem. So you gotta find a problem that people are having or listen to the problems that people are telling you they're having, and then come up with a solution. Provide that on the store and market somewhat well. Now, my example of this came a couple years ago when I was at a local meetup in Orange County and Curtis came up and asked me if there was a starter kit for making multiplayer VR games. And I said, I don't think so. I've looked around and I don't think that there's anything like that. There's some for VR games or some for multiplayer games, but there's nothing that that does both of those. And he said, 
why don't you make one? That would probably do really good. I know I would buy it, and I thought, well, I could probably do that. Like, I've made little multiplayer starter games. Like, it doesn't have to be anything big, just very simple moving around, replicating that, and maybe shooting or something. I'd already made multiplayer VR games, full-fledged ones, so doing something like this was going to be a relatively easy task. I thought, let's let's give it a try. Went home. The next week, I put that asset up on the store, published it. It finally, I think it might have taken like two weeks to go through the approval process. And for multiple years, it made about $500 a month just passively. I'd never updated it. I never had to do anything with it. I think one person asked for a refund and Unity handled that. I didn't even have to do anything with that. It just kind of went along making cash. And that was small scale. That was just me doing something in you know a week, a simple little project that solved a problem. There are lots of other problems. And I've talked to quite a few other asset developers, some coders who've gone out and found a code problem that people were struggling with, something that not everybody found an easy way to deal with in the Unity editor or the inspector or something else. And I've also met a dozen, oh, oh, why did I say a dozen? A lot, <laughs> not a dozen, dozens of artists who, <laughs> and I've also met dozens of artists who are making a killing off of the asset store. They create art assets and they publish them out consistently. And as they build up more and more in their libraries, they start to see bigger and bigger sales to the point where they can you know, have full-time jobs just selling their art assets. If you're an artist, this is one of the things I'm always jealous of. If you're an artist and you're not selling art assets on the asset store, I don't know why, because personally, it's like the one thing that I wish I had as a skill. Now, it is important if you're making art for the asset store to do two things. First, make videos that show the features of the things that you've got. If you've got like a good character, show the cool character features that it has. If you've got a cool environment, show that off in a video. And if you're building environment stuff too, make sure that you actually build out a good demo scene, because while you can probably build a really cool level, us programmers really struggle with it. So most of the time we go in, take the demo scene and use that. That's like our, if that's not there, then we might just move on to another pack just because the demo scene is not there and we don't want to spend a day trying to set up a terrible looking scene. The other thing that makes a really big difference for art is having enough of it. So if you've got a character, that's cool and all, but if there's not enough characters to make a game out of it, I'm probably not going to go with that pack, and I'm probably going to go with a pack that has you know, four characters or ten characters. When I see publishers who have just dozens and dozens of things that all kind of match the same theme and set, that's what I want to look at first, because that's kind of giving me the ability to go in there and build out everything that I need until I want to swap the stuff out if, if I decide to swap things out later. Just remember that most of the people that are getting things off of the asset store, they've got some ideas and they need the help. They need those extra pieces in there. They don't have the ability to go in and make 10 different versions of the character by tinting the color because they're not artists. They're designers or programmers or something else. So add some variation, add some variety and expand it out. Even if it's just 10 different tints of the same character with different color skins, make those into prefabs, put that into the pack. It will go a long way and make sure that you feature and show that so that everybody knows, hey, I've got these 10 characters that I can now use, even if it's just small modifications and tweaks between them. I always tell artists, you know, make them ver variable so that you can adjust them, have some parts that pop on and off, maybe use some blend shapes if you're familiar with them so you can expand and collapse and have a ton of variety. Then you can really give the people of the asset store, the general Unity developers, exactly what they want, which means that they'll end up picking and buying your asset. And then, of course, you've got that passive income. Again, Make sure that you make these things very visible. If you've got 10 var variations on a character, show those 10 variations. Make sure that it's very obvious. People see one thing versus 10 things, even if that the nine other ones were a tiny little bit of work for you, that extra nine makes a big difference, especially when you start to see these big bundles and you see the big sales with these giant $300 bundles. Those things go up there because they sell well and you can get in on that. Just start making art, keep doing it. I would recommend you know, do a piece a week or a piece a month, whatever schedule you can stick to and just constantly churn things out, build it up over time and have a nice passive income stream. I wanna wrap this up by just saying if you've had experience with 
publishing on the asset store drop a comment down below and let me know how that went i'm curious if it's been as great for everybody else as it has for me and the people that i've talked to and also wanted to remind you that if you are building a game or working on a game and you guys need assets for your game the unity spring sale is still active where you can get 50 percent off a whole bunch of awesome assets and 80 percent off of quite a few of them as well I've already got 80 and 70% off a lot of stuff, so I definitely recommend you go check it out. And also use the code WELCOME2022 if you haven't bought anything from the Asset Store before. It'll give you an extra 25% off.